Truth Seeker and or its affiliates are not responsible for any strange phenomena that may occur during or after listening to this podcast, which may include the following. Heightened senses of awareness, psychic abilities, UFO sightings, alien contact, time loss, out-of-body experiences, ringing in the ears, ESP, lucid dreaming, increased synchronicities, astral projection, telepathy, stronger intuition, levitation, miraculous healings, and or remote viewing. Please be advised to listen at your own discretion. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm your host, Truth Seeker, and this is the Truth Seeker Podcast. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. I'm excited and delighted to be here with you all. Got a good conversation planned for you guys. Uh, hopefully, we can uh, learn some new information about the different ways that God speaks to us. And uh, I think what we'll probably get to, to sum everything up, is that God has been speaking the whole time. It's not about what we can do to get him to start speaking, but God is speaking. So we're going to go through some of the ways that we can quiet down and hear his voice. Trust me, this is going to be a good show. Uh, Thankful for all the patron supporters, man. Thank you guys for supporting my work, enabling me to do what I'm doing here. Uh, Everybody in the chat room right now, give a shout out to you guys. Um, If you want to support my work, head on over to patreon.com backslash true seeker if you believe in what i'm doing and if you can support at any level of giving even at a dollar a month would be awesome you get a lot of perks by doing that you get access to my full discography of music i got 10 plus albums of music on there all the new music that i'm recording as soon as it's done it's uploaded to patreon you get exclusive interviews and a bunch of really cool stuff you also get access to our thursday night school of the mystic sessions which is the community aspect of the podcast so we come together and really talk about what we're going to be talking about today how to hear god's voice and we practice that we practice hearing god's voice so if you want to do that in a uh, safe environment where it's okay to ask questions it's okay to learn and grow together and nobody's going to judge you or you're not wrong for for not being right on or something like that it's a really a fun experience for us to grow together and hearing the voice of the holy spirit speaking to us and through us so thursday nights 7 p.m school of the mystics you get access to that all be- by becoming uh, a patron so patreon.com backslash true seeker bunch of cool stuff over there thank you guys for the continued support it, it really means the world to me thank you guys so Without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and bring in our guest for today. This is James Robar. James, welcome to the show, brother. How are you? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited about coming on your show today. Yeah, your book, very interesting. I got a chance to breeze through some of it. Um, the, uh, the the title in itself, I've entitled this show, God is Talking, Are You Listening? I mean, there's a that, that in itself, we can unpack a lot of questions and we're going to, I'm going to ask you some questions. I've got some stuff even uh, written down here that I want to go into. God is talking. Are you listening? But before we get into the subject matter, let's just give the listeners a little bit of background about who you are, what you do and where you come from, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so um, I, I put all my social profiles that I'm first the son of God. That's first and foremost, that's the knowing who you are. And, and then I'm a father and a husband, second. 
And so that comes before any, anything and everything else I do. And then besides that, I'm a minister, I'm a Christian author, uh, and also you can say an, an aspiring entrepreneur. I'm kind of working on some business things on the side. So uh, I got a lot of different things going on. Um, I'm originally from Indianapolis, Indiana. And uh, excuse me, my voice uh, just a little weak today. Sorry about that. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, about, well, back in 2004, I met my wife, who's from Finland. I was actually in the Army as a chaplain assistant. I was serving over there on the Defense Language Institute in Monterey, California. And uh, so I met my Finnish wife, actually, in a Bible study there. And uh, we decided to, you know, get married and and live our life together. And so I came here to Finland, actually. I live in Finland. Wow. And uh, I don't know if I told you that or not. I didn't know. (laughs) Yeah. So it's a nice, interesting uh, surprise, maybe. So uh, I'm actually seven hours uh, ahead of your, actually, I think I'm eight hours, maybe. So, uh, yeah, I live in Finland. I've been here since uh, 2004, December 2004. And uh, we got three kids together. And um, not too long after I came here, we actually started a ministry together here that we've been doing for pretty much most of the time I've been here. It's called Kingdom Glory Ministries. And so uh, we've been doing a lot of different events, mostly small, but some a little bit larger. Um, I don't know if you heard of David Tomberlin from Lakeland Revival. We hosted him here for a revival tour some time ago. And uh, we've just done different stuff, prayer meetings, a lot of different things. But I've been preaching since I was uh, 18 years old. I went out right out of high school. I started preaching. And uh, I've been pretty much in ministry, some level, some capacity ever yeah. since. So that's like a real quick summary of the last 25 years of my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I just have a quick question, man. Like, what is the culture like as far as church culture is it very similar to the U.S.? I mean, is, uh, you know, what's what's the differences or if there's any? I know the condition of the human heart is the same wherever you go, but church culture and the way things operate, is it pretty much similar? Um, well, first of all, you have to understand the, the country in itself. It's only about five million people. So it's much, much smaller. And that definitely affects uh, things. You know, if you go to some little island versus you go to New York City. Yeah. In terms of a country, it's a small country, and um, and then also the just the people in general are a bit more quiet, and, and just in general, so you definitely see that in the churches. You know, the services are more quiet, and the people are a little more reserved, and and uh, um, and then but if you talk about in terms of like charismatic churches, you know, where the Holy Spirit's like really moving. Uh, I would say less than two percent of the population uh, would fall into that. So you're a real minority in terms of a uh, kind of Holy Spirit. Now there are some couple larger uh, organizations. There's the Pentecostal Church of Finland, and then there's uh, the Free Church, and there's a few others. And um, but um, I would say that there's been some lost, you know, you almost kind of see it a little bit in the Methodist movement, you know, the Methodists started out as the premier movement of its time. Um, But you, I don't know if you necessarily would say that nowadays, you know, so there's some of that here. Um, But um, I actually have a Facebook group called, called God is in Finland. And one of the things I like to say is that God is in Finland and uh, no matter where you go, God is there. It doesn't matter what everybody else is doing. Uh, God is there. And I like to focus on that. And, uh, and there are definitely some good churches here for sure. There's definitely a, a community of believers and uh, there's actually quite a lot of opportunity really spiritually. I mean, there's a lot of people coming here to Finland uh, from the States. You got people from Bethel just all kind of, people coming here mission trips and stuff so uh overall it's it's good but there's definitely a lot of need just like anywhere else yeah hey uh james your mic's cutting in and out a little bit i don't know if it's uh moving or the cord or anything like that but uh sometimes it'll be good then other times it's going in and out but yeah man that's awesome bro because um the cool thing about god hearing god working with god following god is that 
you know, we want numbers like we want, you know, what I'm saying the more the merrier. But it says where two or three are gathered there. I am in the midst of him. So if you was to do a prayer meeting uh, or, or an event, you can have a powerful encounter with God with just you and two other people. I mean, you can have a powerful time by yourself. But when two or three are gathered there, I am in the midst is what he says. And uh, some of the most powerful times have been with really close brothers. So we can just open up with and can. And, and confess and, and stuff and like being able to get things out that we've been holding in or we can pursue God together in a righteous pursuit that we don't get any kudos or pat on the back for being in a social environment. We're just here with one mission uh, at hand, which is to seek the face of God and to, to push, to pray until something happens. And uh, so, so some of those beautiful encounters, man, have been two or three people gathered and it have shaped the foundation of my life and 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 why I'm doing what I do. That's the beautiful thing about God and having an, an encounter. We talk to a lot of different people from different spiritual backgrounds. And I mean, I talk to people who, you know, have traveled to Peru and ayahuasca and traveled, you know, to have those encounters. And, you know, all of that stuff is, is good for the person wherever they are. I'm not against any of that, but it comes back to the simplicity that I don't need anything that I can just be in my room and make time to pray get with God in, in, in meditation and in prayer. And he'll speak to my heart. Um, I've had encounters just with Jesus, man, where I'm vibrating and shaking for days. I feel the glory all over my body for days, you know, and, and that's the beautiful thing that we don't need anything outside of ourselves, that God has given us everything that we need, that we are the temple that we can go in and commune with our father in the Holy of Holies by going within in prayer. So that's the beautiful thing about what we're doing. We don't have to force anything. We don't have to make any, anything up, but uh, teaching people to hear the voice of God. It's like, what do you do after the encounter? How do we walk it out? How do we follow these encounters? So uh, that's a good thing, man. I want to kind of, kind of jump into some of these questions uh, uh, for you. And I, I want to start off with your promo. Like you did a promo for your book. Well, you, you got you got like I said, you got a book by the same title as this show. God is talking. Are you listening? So you did a promo and it was really cool because <laughs> you because you go on on YouTube and you you're, you have the video on you. It's just like a cell phone video. And you was like, uh, you got the microwave on. There's stuff going on in the background. You got a basketball game on turned up really loud. And you're coming with the message. Hey, I want to talk to you today. I got something to share with you. And the background <laughs> is going crazy. There's noises and the basketball game and chanting and the crowd and stuff. He's like, Hey, I got a really important message for you. And you're trying to deliver this message and you want to talk to the viewer, but there's something on your heart you want to share, but they can't really hear you that well. They can hear you, but they hear everything else as well. So, and you turn off the microwave, you turn off the TV and you give this perfect analogy of how the voice of God is trying to communicate a very special message with us at all times, but we have all of this stuff going on. We got the TV, we got the games, we got life, we got the bills. Sometimes the bills are louder than God, you know, all of these things speaking at the same time. Then it's when we begin to turn off these little things and get in the the stillness or the quiet that we're able to actually make sense and, and see what God's trying to say to us, man. So that was an awesome um, promo you did. If you want to unpack that a little bit more, that'd be awesome. Well, uh that's kind of cool to get the feedback from that. Uh, how's my mic now? You're good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was kind of wondering, cause that was a little different. You don't really see promos like that too much, you know, <laughs> but uh, I just like, you know, I need to do something, you know, and uh, I just, I just had that idea. And I, I think it does kind of illustrate the, the really the main point of the whole book in my microphone still good. Yeah, you good. So, um, the, the, the main point of the whole book and actually why the whole book was ever written was really that point right there. See, what happened was, is um, I was going through a season like many people, or I say probably everybody does in their life sometime, it, it, where you kind of wonder where's God and why I don't hear him and how come he's not talking to me, you know. And um, so I was in a, a church meeting and I was kind of feeling like this. And uh, God just kind of reached out to me and he spoke to me and he said, <clears throat> it's not my responsibility to make it abundantly clear to you. And um, w what I got from that, it took me a while to understand what he meant by that. And uh, what I understood was it's 
it's like it's not God's responsibility to turn the microwave off. It's not his responsibility to go turn the TV off. If I'm doing something to block his voice, that's not his responsibility to turn those things off. That's my responsibility to, to quiet the noises so that I can hear him. It, because the thing about God is when he talks, he speaks clearly. God, God is not the author of confusion. So he doesn't have to change something that he said because it was confusing and now he needs to make it more clear to you. When he speaks, he speaks clearly. And if it's not clear to you, it doesn't mean that he didn't speak clearly. It just means that you need to do something uh, so that you can understand him. Um, that's why Jesus spoke in parables, because um, he only the people who had a relationship with him would understand him. But those who did have a relationship with him would understand him, you see. And so you can't understand, like, God's voice if you're not in the Word, because when he talks, it won't make sense to you. But if you're in the Word every day, when he talks to you, it's going to make sense to you. So uh, I just got the message from God, like, hey, you know, I'm talking, you know, uh, but are you listening? <laughs> you know, so and uh, I just got the inspiration to write this book. And, uh, you know, it's been a, a really great journey for me. I mean, I already knew a lot about the prophetic and hearing God's voice, but going in and studying it and trying to present the information in a simple, yep. clear way that somebody who didn't know anything about hearing God's voice, that they could take my book and by the end of their, the book, they would have at least a basic understanding how to hear God's voice and why they're not hearing God's voice. That, that was my goal for this book. And then that's why I wrote the book, because I wasn't hearing God's voice. And God's told me what I need to do that I can start again hearing his voice. Yeah. And yeah. So, yeah and something like that is uh, is universal for for all believers. And I think there's some some outline and things like that in the scripture. For me, when it comes to that, like um, I'm really good at multitasking. or I like to think I am doing a, multiple things at once and I can juggle all of this stuff. Right. Um, but when it, when it comes down to the relationship with God I, I, and, and that communication process, I really look at it like the relationship with the spouse. I mean, we're, we're even the bride of Christ. And so this, this, uh, relationship, like you're in a relationship with a human, right? I mean, how, why would you do it any differently? So if you honor a relationship with, um, a partner or a friend, um, and being able to multitask, like my wife will be talking to me and I'll have the radio on and I'll be in the middle of a phone call and I'm talking to my wife at the, at the same time, but I can do it and I feel like I'm good and I, I can get the message, but it's part of that relationship. It's like, she's like, turn, turn that down. I'll talk to you when you're off the phone. Like I want your undivided attention. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's part of that, of, of honoring God or being able to listen to clearly hear, because even though I'm, I think I'm good at it, I'm going to only <laughs> hang on to the pieces that I want to hear. You know what I'm saying? And it's going to be a little bit distorted because my friends in my ear and I'm listening to the lyric and I'm trying to have this conversation. And that's how we, most of us approach our relationship with God is that we're trying to juggle all these things. And it even opens up the door for like, you know what I'm saying? Meditation for me, the, the, the topic of that, because I really feel like, um, uh, approaching God, I think we're, we're supposed to get it, you know, stop thinking about the cares of the day or what we're going to eat tonight and all of these things. And so like in, in a practice of meditation and prayer with the father or going into worship or anything like that, I I'm really keen on emptying out my thoughts and getting all those things out. Some and it, it's debatable in, in Christian circles. They're like, oh, if you empty out your thoughts, you open up yourself for possession. I've heard people say that, but if we're having a conversation, I if I want I want to talk to you. I want I want to have your undivided attention as well. I don't, you know, if you're you're thinking about what you're doing tomorrow or what you're going to eat this evening or whatever, I don't really have you there. So to get all of that stuff out the way, and I think it's a level of of intimacy to really focus on God and hearing what God has to say for us. Like I said, it, it's parallel with our relationships with our spouses and friends, you know, not 
and, and it said that prayer is when we talk to God, right? But meditation is when God talks to us. It is a conversation. It's a two way street. Most of us will go to God and we'll present him with all of our worries and our baggage. And hey, we pray for our friends who's going through a rough time. And then that's it. And they're done. But the most powerful times I'm talking about those encounters that I've had with Jesus, man, with friends and small communities. There is this place where after you pray, after you worship, after you get in where you sit in silence Hmm. just for a few minutes. And I've seen powerful things happen, whether it's a message that comes forth in tongues. But it's like, okay, we've done our thing. Let's just be quiet. Let's just tarry. And in our mind. We can't have dead air like having a podcast or a radio show. Dead, oh, <laughs> dead air is not good. But in, in that sense of this communication with God, you have to be still and know that I am God to sit in silence and let God speak, man. And I've seen the power of God just just let him do his thing. Be quiet for a minute. I know you could do, I know you could do it. I know you're eloquent. I know you got the words. I know you know how to lead a service and direct the traffic of the spirit or whatever. But just be quiet and, and and see what happens, man. And like like a tornado, man, like a mighty a mighty rushing wind, as the scripture says, man, comes through and God comes through and moves on on people's hearts, man, and changes lives in in silence. So that's beautiful, brother. Amen, brother. I, I totally agree that uh, that we have to quiet ourselves. And uh, but you know, one of the things I talk about the book too is is God speaks in many ways and. Uh, you don't necessarily have to be quiet that he will hear you. And, and that's one of the things I talk about is, is to look for his voice everywhere you go. So when you're watching a movie, when you're listening to a song, when you're talking to a friend, um, when you're just walking through the forest, like it, you will hear him more clearly when it is quiet. But don't think that the only time you can hear him is when it is quiet. But, but what, what, I, what I think is that you will hear him more often in the other times of the day, the more you take that quiet time to be with him. You see, so when you develop that relationship, then you will hear him. You hear me? I can hear you just uh, maybe tap the mic or something. It's Hello? yeah. I don't know. It's just in and it's, I, I can hear you. And on the podcast and I can do some editing, but uh, we can still hear you. Okay. Just kind of low. Man. I paid like a hundred dollars for this mic, so now I hear sure. you good. It's it's weird. <laughs> it's doing this weird, like equalizing and like noise gate or something. You don't have no no noise gate or any effects on it, do you? No. No. Uh, okay. I don't know. Maybe you can send me a link or something. I can check out. Something. <laughs> I can hear you good now. It just kind of goes back in and out, but I'll be able to do some editing uh, in the end, so we could just keep going. I apologize. Uh, I, I gotta check something out. Maybe I got to get a new microphone. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, man, that's that's powerful, too. You know, and I've got that written down because I did I did uh, he- hear you say that about God speaking through everything. Right. Um, and, and you give the analogies throughout the scripture. I mean, man, there's just so many about God speaking through symbols, speaking through stories. You know, I believe that, you know, the majority of the stories in the Old Testament are, are encoded with something for us you know, that we can apply to our lives. And that's God speaking through the word and through analogy and through parable and things like that through King David and, and, you know, facing your giants and, you know, as movies titled at facing your giants and how to do that. And I think King David is a perfect example of that story of how we face our fears, you know, and the things that looks like there's no way we can, we can overcome, you know, and, and the same steps and things that he did, uh, to stand against his giants, we can do as well. Um, but, but talking about that, like God speaking through movies, that's a big one. Uh, music, nature, you know, um, movies is a big one. Like once you, uh, are awakened, once you feel with the Holy spirit, like it's kind of hard to watch movies the same way again. I remember, and it gets into some weird deep stuff, but I'll, when we watch movies, the majority of the times I'm watching a different movie than everybody around me. Like, <laughs> The relationship I have with God, like he starts naming people in the movie, like a character will come and he'll give me insight about who that is in my life or something. Right. And it is just it's crazy, man. Like, okay, this is the Holy Spirit. This is you. And this fight and battle is like when you fight 
the Holy Spirit. And I'm like, and these <laughs> idols and things that you're trying to keep from God because you want your will. And like, I've been able to watch movies, man. And, and it's just, I'm watching a different, I'm, I'll be fighting, holding back tears because we're able to hear God speaking through everything. And he just like changes the whole narrative and uses everything to speak to us. And so it, it, it comes, a, it comes a, a whole deeper level. And even if you would break that down for people, like even synchronicities and stuff like that, it may not have as much power for them, but it's a really a personable thing where it means something for you in that season, whatever you're going through, God knows it. And if it's just that, if you're trying to run from God and he's using a movie, there's no way you can go to get away from his presence that he loves you and he'll chase you down. And, uh, and you know, for that relationship, if I can't have you, no one else can type deal, you know? Um, but I think a lot of people on here like to hear about experiences, uh, personal encounters with God. Um, what are some of the ways that God has spoken to your heart through movies? Uh, if you have any examples or whatever, that'd be awesome too. Um, I don't know. I mean, there's, I'm, I'm a big movie watcher, so it's like, a, there, there's a lot of different movies that have really touched me. Um, I'm trying to think of the name of this uh, one movie about this guy who was uh, abandoned as a child. And uh, he, when he grew up, he, he, he was in the Navy and then Denzel Washington was in the movie. I'm trying to think of the name of it. And uh, he had these problems in, 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 in the Navy, these behavioral problems, and he went to counseling. And, um, and then he eventually went and searched out his biological parents. And uh, that really touched me because uh, uh, my, my parents divorced when I was nine. And uh, when I was nine, my father told me I wasn't really his son. Um, and I had always thought he was. So uh, I kind of connect related with that. And um, the, the same message that came in the movie, I felt like God was giving me the same message, you know? Yeah. Um, it, so I think that you can't underestimate God's ability to reach across anything. The, the, the point that I especially want, want to make about this is that uh, when people are not listening to God and when they're not, taking the time to be quiet, to hear his voice. And if God truly wants to speak to them, then what he basically has to do is he has to go where they are and he has to speak through what they're listening to. So if they're on their phones, he has to speak to them through their phone. If they're watching movies, he has to speak to them through their movies. You see, uh, God, God will use anything, anybody, anyone, any way, you know, I mean, Think about all that he did for us, you know, Jesus did for us, uh, you know, to provide us eternal salvation. So uh, for him to speak through a movie is like nothing for him. That's uh, for us. It might seem like a big deal. It's like, well, God touched me when I was watching a movie or when I was listening to a song um, or, or um, actually even in sports, um, there's certain sport figures like Michael Jordan really inspired me. Um, like like his motivation and his will to not give up. You know, I think God used that. I think God taught me important life lessons through the people that I admired as a young man. God used them to help build a foundation in me, you see. So sometimes God speaks a direct word, but sometimes God is doing something in your life and it's it's like a life message. It's like something that it, it's not. It doesn't come through a few words. It, it comes through um, something that God is doing in your life. And when it's all said and done, there's a message that comes out of that. You see, and, and so God is talking, but He's talking in, in many different kind of ways. And um, I think that that's one of the big points that I try to make because you, you hear a lot of teaching about being quiet, and being yeah. still. Um, but if that's the only time you hear from God, then you miss out. <laughs> if the yeah. only time you hear from God is when you, it's quiet, yeah, then you're missing out. Yeah, definitely, man. Any any time that you try to put a, um, you create a formula 
I mean, there there are formulas, I believe, but any the way you say like this is it. If you want to hear God, this is the only way. Like he'll he'll blow your mind, right? He speaks through everything you say. He speaks through through nature. He speaks through friends, music, movies, and things like that. Um, the thing about the silence, though, I think is good for us in this culture is the fact that everybody's so busy. You know, I have friends and 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 people who talk about like they don't do the quiet time. They don't. Get, sit in silence because they have the notion that oh, I'm always talking to God. I talk to <laughs> God through, all, all throughout the day. You know, everywhere I'm go, I'm always praying under my breath or in relationship. And I am too. Like that's part, I'm consciously aware of my relationship with my father. And, and, uh, and there's, there's beauty in that, but there's something special about the, the secret place, man. There's something special about getting intimate with God where I could be doing a podcast. I could be writing a song. I could be doing laundry, but I'm going to put this time aside and spend it with my father. It's almost symbolic for the wedding chamber um, with the spouse to go to the bedroom with the spouse and become intimate and really know their heart. And, And I can multitask and I can have the conversation with you and I can do this, but to really devote this time i think it's something special man i really i really do think it's something special there so it's a little bit of all of it it's not just you know the this is the only way or that's the only way i think it's a little bit of all of it is is learning the way that the ways that god speaks to us and it be, it, get, it becomes a lot more fun when you're out in public and random conversations god is speaking to you through these conversations and through people and through signs on billboards and all of this kind of stuff when you become so sensitive that you can hear him speaking through everything. Um, So I guess it kind of leads to another topic of like, do you think that we get better at hearing God's voice? Like there's levels to it and stuff. So um, of anticipating God's voice and anticipating God to use us and things like that. Do you think that there's levels and we get better and do we graduate? Like, can he, if we can hear him speaking here, then He'll open up more opportunities to use us because we can hear his voice in these different places that people there can't hear him or something. Absolutely. I mean, I, I totally agree with everything you're saying. I mean, it's right on. It's it's not one or the other. And uh, I think I, I would like to, you know, restate what I said earlier is that the more you will hear him in the quiet place, the more you will hear him in the not quiet place. Yeah. Um, so it's not one or the other, but you definitely need the secret place. Absolutely. Um, there's no question about that. And um, I think that that's where you, you actually where you start is, is the quiet place, is the secret place. But I think the point is, is there are people who are very busy and they don't got three hours a day that they can be quiet. You know, there's busy moms. I mean, there's there's single moms working two, three jobs. Yeah. They don't got hours to go to the secret place every day mm-hmm. they got like an hour maybe if they're lucky so they got to get everything that they need in that one hour and then after that whatever else god has for them they're going to have to get it when they're at work when they're doing the laundry when they're changing the diapers and the point is is that god don't have to stop talking to you when your secret place time ends he can keep on talking to you but absolutely you need that quiet place that quiet time Absolutely. And uh, to answer your question, um, are there levels? Yeah, absolutely. There's levels. I mean, I mean, you got people who don't know anything about the prophetic, just learning. Uh, then you got people who uh, they, they got the basics down and they're practicing. Um, but, you know, they hit and miss and, and that's OK. Um, I'm the first one to tell you. Uh, to hit and miss because you ain't going to hit all the time. You know, the, the greatest batters don't hit hundred percent. Like in base, I'm not even a big baseball fan, uh, but I know like if you bat like 30%, that's pretty good. I know I'm more of a basketball fan. Yeah. So if you shoot like 55% from the field, that's pretty good. So you're like a good basketball player. If you shoot 55% from the field, so, um, now with God, it can be get better than 55%. But anyway, I think a lot of people are afraid, you know, to miss. They're afraid to get it wrong. And uh, I think th- that's unfortunate because th- there's a lot of perfectionism in the world. And, and 
Uh, there's a lot of things that you can get perfect, but trying to figure out God is it's a lifelong journey. It's a process. And uh, sometimes you, you're on it and sometimes you're not. But I think there definitely are levels. And I think that um, it's just like anything else, that the more you work at it, the more you study about it, the more you listen to other people talking about it. I mean, I have found for myself that the more just I listen to prophetic teaching, the more I, I go to prophetic meetings, that uh, the more uh, meetings that I watch where the, the culture is prophetic, um, and, and that, that comes up on me and it comes out of me even more. So it's, it's not just getting to a level and then you're there. It's also about cultivating it. Yeah. Um, because in reality, it's really God speaking through you. If you're prophesying to someone, it's something that God is doing through you. So it's actually not really you doing it. Uh, you're just the, the channel that he's doing it through. And so all you have to do is, is just release yourself and yield to him. Um, which, you know, is, it's easier said than done, but but I think that it's something that's worth pursuing for sure. And uh, I think that it's uh, it's something that we can admire in those prophets, in those people who have went to those higher levels, you know. Uh, we can appreciate what they've done and what they're yeah. doing for the body of Christ because they, they've, they've sacrificed to get yeah. to that. And we can learn from them. You know. Yeah, that's a good thing too, man. It's just not to be condescending about it because we would think that everybody like, okay, if you want it, do it three hours a day. You know what I'm saying? Everybody could do it. But you're, you're right, man. The fact of the matter is everybody can't do it and they rely on people who do. And that's not a bad thing. You know what I'm saying? For I'm, I'm more along. It's, I have to remind myself this because I'm like, okay, well, I'm nothing special. What I do, you can do. Whoever wants it, whatever you want, you can do it. If it's within you and you want to cultivate that relationship and, and be so sensitive to the Holy Spirit and receive messages and all of this kind of stuff, anybody can do it. It's true. But like you said, it's not everybody's calling to spend that much time. Like people, somebody, some people's calling is to be a mother who's <laughs> spending hours a day with, with the children. I mean, I look, I've had people in the past say stuff about my wife or whatever like she's not as spiritual as you or she's not on the same level if if my wife was doing what i did and 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 spending as much time doing this stuff you know nobody would be with my daughter to do her homework you know the the, the chores and things like that that she does she compliments what i do you know what i'm saying so it's how all of this stuff works together um with comp complimenting one another. And so the, 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 the years and the studies, you know, and it's not a bragging right thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, it t does take years. The anointing does cost and everybody's not going to pay that price. Maybe they're not called to pay that price, but to really show up in the role that you play in their life, whatever that may be, whatever you can impart, whatever you can share or encourage them in their walk. But the truth is, I don't think we are special. I think I think we are special. Everyone's special. But I don't think it's something that that nobody else can obtain. I think that what the the levels we're talking about are for everybody. There's some people or prophets or spiritualists who will say that, you know, it's only for a chosen few and you have to uh, you have to be chosen by God. That's true. But the chosen by God is an inward calling. I think you know it. You know what I'm saying? I think that you know your role. I think you know your calling and your dreams and what God has placed within you. So to show up and to compliment people where they are, to help them where they are, whatever level that is, it brings it to a new, more fun place because you don't have to pull them up to your level. You're able yeah. to see as a seer, someone who moves in a prophetic, to see where they are and how you can help them maybe get to a level that you've been. That's a huge thing of us going through the testing and the trials and hearing God's voice and not hearing God's voice and lack of and things like that, that we're able to compliment them wherever they are. So that's beautiful too. to always be conscious. It's like, okay, I mean, some people's not going to do the work. Some people are going to fold under pressure. That's not their calling. So to try to put our calling 
of being so sensitive to the prophetic realms on other people i guess that's a uh that's putting burdens on them that they're not called to you know do I, am i making sense there yeah absolutely I, I totally agree that uh you know you get, eventually you got to be just who god's called you to be and yeah can, that's a big yeah. one though <laughs> Could be it, that. I mean, that could be the hardest part because we try to imitate Christ, but in the means we've church culture, we've imitated others in the way they do it, and think that that's how we should do it, and things, you know. Well, part of being what God's called you to be is knowing what He's called you to be, and that's a process, you know. Um, in, in my opinion, um, a lot of teaching in the past at least has been like just do this or just figure that out and and it's not always quite as simple as some teachers and preachers make it sound to be like like knowing who you are i'm i'm 43 years old and i'm i'm still learning about myself you know yeah um it, it's not like uh, you can go read a book and then you know who you are you go to a <laughs> conference and then when you're done i know who i am now i mean you have to learn who you are not just I mean, even if God told you, you know, he wrote it out word by word, this is who you are, you would only know it uh, on paper, you see. So, you, but you wouldn't know who you are by experience. So I know that um, I like to play basketball because I have played basketball, right? I've went out there and I've done it and I've discovered that, oh, wow, when I do this, I enjoy it and it's fun. But I had to go out there and I had to do it and I had to try it. Um, and that was the only way I ever knew if I would ever like basketball and if I was ever good at it. Um, and I think that's with a lot of things. You discover something about yourself. You, you have to learn about it. You have to process it. And then you have to figure out how far you're going to go with it. Because <clears throat> uh, something I like uh, Mike Murdoch says, I don't know if you know teacher Mike Murdoch. Yeah. He says, uh, just because – uh, you uh, eat a ba banana, don't mean you got to buy a banana plantation, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't got to buy a whole banana plantation just because I bought a banana, right? So I can do something, I can try something, I, I can experience something, and I don't got to be married to the thing. And uh, I think that's also true with the prophetic, you know, when we talk about the prophetic, everybody's not called to be a prophet. And, and, and furthermore, I think that um, everyone that has a prophetic ministry doesn't necessarily have to be a, a prophet. Exactly. So you, can, you can be prophetic and not necessarily have a ministry. You can be called to have a prophetic ministry, but not necessarily called to be a prophet. And then not everybody's called to be a national prophet or international prophet. You know, there's levels of prophets. So um, where I'm at in my life um I consider myself as a prophetic teacher. Teacher, Teaching is my gift. That's what I enjoy to do. That's what I'm gifted to do. And I also know, obviously, writing a book about God is talking, that, that the, the idea of hearing God's voice, um, being around other prophetic people, that that's an important aspect of, of me, but it's not the biggest part of me. But it's something that I know will always be a, a big part of me and what I do in my ministry. Um, I couldn't imagine myself uh, being in a ministry where people aren't hearing God's voice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can't. It's a whole lot of hell. <laughs> I mean, I, I've been there. I don't want to go back. You know, so. It's not good. It's not good. <laughs> um, so do we have a lot of people in the uh, in the comment section. They want to. They said the mu the movie you were talking about is Antoine Fisher. Yeah, Antoine and, Fisher. Antoine Fisher. Okay, so if anybody wants to go back and watch that movie, man, there's um, I, I want I've talked to people in the past. Home Sauce is a good friend of mine. He's in the chat talking about this, but I think I've talked to him about this, like wanting to do an episode where I talk about some of those movies where you know God is speaking, or they have this really deep wisdom about hearing the voice of God, or. Or I mean, even some of the deeper stuff, angels and stuff like that, that, that are encoded and embedded within these movies. I want to like do an episode where I talk about it, but then again, I don't want to ruin it for the person. Like part of the magic is them experiencing experiencing it for themselves and not being taught. I remember years ago, I might have taken the analogy of the movie Ants, and they played it at church. It's a Pixar movie from like early two thousands or whatever or nineties. 
and all these ants are marching in a, a, a row and they're carrying stuff, food and all this, and then something falls, a drop of water falls in the middle of them and they stop and the ant starts panicking, freaking out. Where do I go? What do I do? Oh my God. And it's like some of you guys, when and when adversity comes and hard times and suffering comes, this is how you act. You know what I'm saying? You start freaking out and wonder, wondering where is God and stuff like that. So the, the teachings and analogies and stuff, man, are throughout everything. And I think you do become, you get better at hearing God's voice so you can do different levels. It's, it's communication, man. Like a, like a friend. He said, I'll stick, I'll stick with you closer than a, a brother. I, you know, he's like a best friend. And he, I think he wants to hear about your day. I think he wants to know about the inner workings. He already knows it, but it's part of being vocal and sharing that intimate side of you with your father. And, uh, and, and, and the Holy Spirit as well. And you kind of grow in that. And then you become where you go. You're on a telephone conversation and <laughs> God tells you to pray. And the person's about to get off the phone and you ain't prayed yet. And they're about to hang up. And then you pass a billboard that says, just pray. Hey, bro, we're <laughs> going to go ahead and pray out before we get off of here. And I want to bless you. You know what I'm saying? Like little things like that, that I've seen throughout my life. And it's like being able to see God in all. And then there's a, there's a, uh, a quote that says, if you can't see God in all, then you can't see God at all. You know, we're talking about the music. A lot of people listen to music to worship God. I mean, it's a very powerful tool to get alone or or corporate worship for that matter, but using music to worship God, to get in the spirit. But I've heard, I, I've, I've fasted music in the past, you know, and say, okay, no music just because I'm obsessed with music. I love music and and I want to make sure I can worship God without music. And I've I've brought that to friends. They freak out. That's the way I worship God. I could never fast music. And I'm like, bro, if that's the only way that you worship God is through music, then we got we got bigger problems here. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it's like it's being able to 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 use all of it to to hear God, to commune with God. Um, and I honestly, bro, I really that the more you study that concept, it 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 opens up to literally everything, the good, the bad, the ugly, the dry places, the valley, the wilderness, like God is speaking through everything, man, through our enemies. You know what I'm saying? He's trying to teach us things. Like I look back at my past and I, I talk about my past a lot and demonic possession and being in the occult and stuff like that really deep. And, um, I was in a really crazy place, but at this point I wouldn't trade that for anything because there's lessons that God communicated to me through experience. Like you're saying that I can read 80 books and I'll never grasp that understanding of God's love for me that he's willing, you know, to go wherever I go to reach out to me. Like there's no way I can. And, and, and a lot of those times of, of seeing God in movies and stuff have been in different levels. And sometimes it's been running from God or having idolatry in my heart. You know, the, the, the deeper we grow with God, he exposes every area. So if you're holding on to something too tight, if you got to let something go, even for a season, like God, man, he picks you apart, man. And it's for good reason. It's not because he don't want you to be happy. It's not that he wants to withhold something good from you. It's because he has something better. You can't let go of something good in order to receive what's great. And the majority of it's like that. It's like we're holding on to these things tighter and closer than we're holding on to God. And in all those situations, those scenarios have played out in those movies and things like that. And the dreams, even in the dream realm of God speaking and having, you know, symbolic things in the dreams and and being able to understand the symbolism of not just having a bad dream or a dream that I was being attacked by a wolf or an alligator or a tornado to understand look that tornado represents my idolatry my whatever it is you're going through your porn addiction whatever it is like it's it's represented within the psyche and God uses all of it to speak that's I, I really do think that's where we everyone can be there and eventually we will and it becomes deeper. It becomes deeper of this. You're never alone. God's always watching. He's always speaking. It's a, it's a, it's a communication process and it works both ways. And so I think people grow in, in levels and for us to be, and that's the thing when you never arrive and I think I'm deep. I think you're deep. I think there's a lot of people listening who 
they they you know they resonate with what we're talking about like it's everyday thought but there's people who are deeper you know what i'm saying there's yeah. people who are deeper Absolutely. and to fathom that you know what i'm saying it's so it, it but that's a good thing it's never a, i have an arrived place it's this journey that i understand that how god is speaking to me man <laughs> it's good <laughs> this gives us something to look forward to as well like i think as deep as your mind can go as deep as your spirit wants you to go think you can go there if you can imagine it if you can fathom it you can you can embody it and and, and walk in it i don't think there's any limits to god man i really good stuff <laughs> you know one of my favorite scriptures is uh the scripture says that god is is, is exceedingly and abundantly able to do above all that you can ever ask or think so that that's a powerful statement if you think about it what it means is whatever you can imagine in your mind, God is not just able to do more than that. He's exceedingly and abundantly able to do more than that. Yeah, <laughs> there's like, no cap. <laughs> so far beyond our comprehension that the Bible is basically saying that we we can't actually fathom how awesome he is and what he's able to do. And, and the point is that he he can speak to us in 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 any kind of a way um you know there's the the song that says uh, love is all around you mm-hmm. you know that love is knocking outside your door so uh i don't know if that's even a christian song <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, it doesn't matter that's just what you, we're, that's the topic though that god yeah, can exactly. use whatever he wants to use Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Actually, that's a good example. I didn't even think of it. But actually, God take that song and, and communicate a message to me that uh, that because the Bible says God is love, right? Yeah. So when you're talking about love, you're you're talking about God because God exactly. says God is love. So if love is all around you, then God is all around you, right? And God is knocking on your door. So he, He's all around you. He's He's everywhere. And he's knocking on your door. Yeah, man, that's that's a deep revelation. You know what I'm saying? That really is to understand that God is love. And no matter that every good and perfect gift comes from above and anything good, anything noble, anything true in your life is a part of God. And it, because everything is a part of God. I even think the dark times are a part of God. You know what I'm saying? I think that everything that we go through, he he's the author and finisher, man, that you, nothing happens by mistake, and he uses all of our everything for his glory, or uh, even if we cause it upon ourselves. Now we can get into that, but he uses it all, and he speaks through it all. We were just talking about this the other day on our on our um, uh, school of the mystic session that using secular music, man. I mean, there's so many secular songs that um, that God speaks through, and you know, and, and people want to. You know, everybody has their way of interpreting. Say, well, that you know, that person was supposed to be a a worship leader, but they're making music for the devil. But it just comes out. I've heard all kinds of weird theology behind it, but it comes down to the fact that that song wouldn't even have been birthed if that person was living a different life or whatever. We look at Morning Star Ministries. You speak about the prophetic. I mean, they've been known for taking secular songs and remaking them and using the same choruses. They, I mean, they did a lot of Beatles stuff and a lot of '70s music. I was huge in in the Morning Star back in the day, and uh, yeah, just the message. A lot of this stuff is universal, you know. And but in Christendom, we kind of have this weird thing about uh, the messenger. We exalt the messenger over the message, you know what I'm saying? And it really comes down to the message of love, of acceptance, of knowing who you are in Christ and uh, and, and finding out and exploring the depths of that. Like I said, I don't think we'll ever reach a pinnacle. I think it continues to grow. Um, it's we've, exp- I'm sh- we've experienced things that uh, some people may never experience. That's deep, man. And they don't have to, though. That's another thing to be okay with that. You don't have to go and show them these great mysteries and revelations of the kingdom that God has has, has given you because you asked for it. I think that's the, you know, ask, seek, knock. And as, as far as your mind will allow you to go, God uses your imagination. He uses your thoughts. I mean, 
the whole battle of good and evil and demonic possession and entities and all of this stuff is a battle for the mind of of ungodly beliefs and stinking thinking and false realities and things like that that we've accepted and lies about ourselves that we've thought to be truth you know what i'm saying we get to the bottom of that stuff it all takes place within the psyche and there is no there's no limit to that and that's that should encourage you because once you feel like you've you've hit a, a plateau that there's still greater levels man and and i don't know that that's that even should be the pursuit but it's there to know that whatever you're seeking you can find it and that's just the laws of the universe that whatever you look for you're gonna find if you look for the good and everything you're gonna find it if you look for the bad and the devil and the evil and everything and demonic and all of this stuff you're gonna find it it's there whatever you're looking for you will find and so that's part of communicating with God. I say, what, what does the scripture say? You say, if we want to hear what God's saying, we can always go back to the word. And the scripture says, hey, whatever, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is good, whatsoever is noble, think on these things. Entertain your mind with these thoughts for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Because we're going to begin to see that. It's going to shape the way that we're able to perceive ourselves, God, our brothers and sisters in the world around us. And we can see people like God sees them. And that's always been my biggest prayer is God, let me see these people, how you see them. Don't don't let me get away from my judgments and how I feel and my bigotry and all of what I think, how it should be. Let me see these people, how you see them. And then we're able to move into a state of compassion and we learn and we grow from experience and it just gets deeper and deeper and deeper. Somebody mentioned the sanctification process and that's really it. Just going these deeper and deeper, deeper levels with God where you go as deep as you want to go at the end of the day. If you want to hear his voice closer than a friend, you want to hear him, you want to know his heartbeat, like it's there, it's available without shadow of a doubt. Amen, bro. You know, when you're talking, uh, I, I'm getting revelation. It's like you're uh, <laughs> you're mentioning things that uh, I, I either think, okay, maybe I should have put that in the book or maybe I, uh, yeah. <laughs> like when you talk about God speaks to the, the pain, I didn't really talk about that much in my book, but it's true. Like God doesn't just speak through the, the, the movies with a happy ending. Yeah. God can speak in the movies with the, the sad endings too. Um, and God can speak through the, the pain and the, the sorrow and I think he does. It's not just he can. I think he, he, I think actually that's what he's trying to do. Yeah. That's when it counts uh, the most, man. Yeah. He's, he's not trying to hurt us. Right. He, he's not this evil God. who just gets a kick watching us suffer. Uh, he's preparing us and he's taking us through something. Um, you know, David said, yeah, though, uh, I walk through the valley. Yeah. And it's not, yeah, though, I walk to the valley. It's, yeah, though, I walk through the valley. <laughs> The valley is not the point. It's it's I'm walking through the valley because there's something on the other side that God has for me, and He He wants to teach me in the valley um, because there's something on the other side that uh, I will need to learn in the valley before that I can truly appreciate and understand that I wouldn't be able to unless I walked through the valley. So I mean that's that's a really good point right there, right? Um, that God doesn't just speak through the, the good things. He, th he speaks to the pain and, and the suffering and things like that and the mistakes. Um, um, I mean, the more I talk about it, the more excited I get about it because it's like when you realize how much God is talking, how can you ever really wonder, is he actually really talking when you understand how creative he is and, and how much effort he puts to, to communicate to us, you know, um, it, it's really mind-boggling, really, when uh, you think about that there's this God who created the whole world, and there's 7 billion people in the world, and he's going to actually take time to craft a special message just for you, and he's going to go out of his way to get that message to you. Um, I think that's powerful. Yeah, man, definitely. Um talking about uh, there's so many different 
places we can go. I just want to make sure I keep on because I don't want to open up something that's going to take us a long time to unpack. But understanding um, God speaking through the good thing and we can hear the voice of our father. And the scripture literally says that my sheep know my voice. This is Jesus speaking. My sheep know my voice and a stranger's voice they will not follow. Um, part of learning to hear the voice of God is learning to hear the other voices too, and, and being able to discern which is which and which is a good idea. You have a lot of people, man, this, this really, uh, I'm studying this. I've got some teachings and stuff. I'm it's, it's really deep, but there's a lot of people who God told me this, God told me that. And they are supposed to get a pass. You know what I'm saying? Because the Holy spirit, who are you to question what the Holy spirit told me? Um, and it's contradicting things that God is telling other people. Well, God told me this and he told you that, and it's bringing up a schism and a conflict between us. Somebody's lying. One of us is lying or one of us is Mr. Mark or one of us is there's something to that. And I don't, we don't have to really unpack that too much, but understanding um, when the enemy is speaking, I, I believe in God's sovereignty to a level that I understand that God uses the devil. God uses every circumstance and situation. I don't think that there's something that happened like, you know what? I messed up. I went down this road for four years. And, but if we learn what, what, you know, what caused us to go down that road, the entities we, we were dealing with, the heartache we caused other people, like you learn from that stuff and God uses that to build character in you so that when you're, you have a big ministry or a platform in that same temptation or folly is coming you've already learned because you've been down through there and you're not going to make that mistake again that's how you learn from those situations and i think that god orchestrates that stuff man that's the beauty and sovereignty of who he is but understanding that you don't have to fall at every pitfall you don't have to be blown around by every wind of doctrine just to go down through there and learn now there's times and seasons for all of this stuff i think but you don't have to fall to the tricks of the enemy and to compromise and selling yourself short. And, and maybe this is a whole nother book for you. Cause it's kind of the, the, you know, I think for one thing to be true, I think for your book to be true in this, in this concept we're tackling for God to speak to us, I think the opposite has to be true as well. I think that there has to be places where the enemy is trying to speak into our lives and trying to lie to us and deceive us. And you're not good enough. And, defeat you're broken you are has been you used to be a powerful man of god now you're you've fallen you know what i'm saying uh all of these type of things man that that we deal with you know i've i deal with it even to this day like i still have to prophesy over myself and over my vision and stay true to the path that god has called me to i have naysayers i have youtube commenters like all kinds of stuff that comes with the territory um but you have to know your vision and, and see it through and it's nobody else's job to do it. They're here one day, they're gone the next and that'll preach in itself. But understand the man, the voice of the enemy. Do you, do you have any experience with that, with understanding the, the, the voice of the enemy speaking to you and how to discern between the two? Well, actually in my book, I, there's a big section about that um, where I talk about nine ways to know if you're hearing from God or not. And so uh, it could take a while to go through all that. But there, there's like a, a self-check. Um, you can't just assume that you're hearing from God. Yeah. <laughs> you feel good. You know, I watched this movie and it made me feel good. Yeah. And I feel like God told me to divorce my wife because in the movie, this guy divorced his <laughs> wife and then everything <laughs> went good for him. So I think God's telling me to divorce my wife. Yeah. No. <laughs> there's people who think like that, man. Because you, that was the end of every movie. It's just the end of that particular scene, you know. You know, it's always they lived happily ever after. Well, first of all, everybody don't live happily ever after. Second of all, just because things went good for them at, at that time in their life, you didn't. What if they made part two? What would that movie look like? You know, um, maybe in part two, he he's uh, you know a cocaine addict and he's sleeping under a bridge and he puts a bullet in his head. I mean, you don't know. Yeah. So it's a movie, you know, so uh, you, you can't take too much, you know, from a movie. But one of the things I I, uh, I talk about in the book is that that the number one thing is is what you heard is a biblical, you know, um, 
is it in agreement with the word of God? Um, and, and that's a pretty easy one because all you need to do is, is just do some research and, uh, you know, ask some people if, if you're a new believer. And you can confirm most things um, just through the word of God, you know, and, and what good sound biblical principles are, you know, that, that can take care of a lot of things right there. So um, um, I don't know if you want me to go through. No, that's more. good, man. Yeah, no, that's, that's good. Um, you know, that part two. And so like learning from your own mistakes is always big, but you can never, you can never stop there. You have to learn from the mistakes of, an, of, of others. And I think that, I think there's a proverb on that of being able to, you know what I'm saying? Watch somebody, a fool, fall into all of these temptations and, 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 and troubles and trials and things like that. And if you respond the same way or you pursue the same things, you're probably going to have a similar end. So like we were saying, if there's, if that's true, if that's his fate, if you smoke crack every day, you'll start robbing people. You'll start like, there's, there's a fruit and consequences that comes with every action and decision that we make. So you don't have to go out there and learn from, from that when you're presented and I know it's so blunt, but if you're presented with smoking crack or drug drug use or alcoholism, whatever it is, you can look at somebody else's life who's been down through there in that path, and you can say, no, I don't, I don't want that for myself. You know what I'm saying? I want something, some, some, something better, something greater, uh, for, for for myself, for my family, for my kids. And you don't have to actually go down through there to learn. I think that's part of the whole alchemy of it all. Is we we, we learn from our own mistakes, but we can learn by watching others. And other people fall into dangers and temptations, man. Um, you know, with the with with the allegory and the meanings behind it, I have a lot of people um, who have seen my story and they learn from the experiences. I mean, that's why we're doing this type of podcast is to let people know, like, look, this is what's working. This didn't work. Please don't do this. If you do, you're gonna fall into a pit. If you do, these spirits accompany this lifestyle or wh- whatever the case is. And um, I have a lot of friends who who have learned a lot by watching my life and pitfalls and, and the good things as well. And seeing me get back up and stay true to who I am. And, and if you do this, or if you, I mean, even in church culture, man, I have friends who, and they, it's hard for them to, to be a part of a lot of it too, because you have to be someone else. A lot of times, like if you believe something else or you, whatever you're going to, you know, people are going to respond differently, you know, not to go into a lot of detail, but I have friends who to this day, they say, look, man, I seen what happened to you and I don't want that to happen to me, man. You know what I'm saying? Like they're just straight up with it. And, and, and that's wisdom though. That's wisdom to learn from everything, not just the good, not just the bad, not just what happens to us, but what happens to people around us that, um, you know, it's, it's whatever seeds you're sowing, you're, you're going to reap eventually, you know, that's, that's scriptural. Um, I have one more question, man. I just want to get your take on this. This is something that I've been addressing on a few different podcasts. You know, I, I do a lot of different spirituality and, and talks with people of all walks of life. And, uh, so I've had a, um, the chance of people when we use the word God, there's a lot of people in spirituality who don't like the word God. I think because it reminds them of church or biblical principles that maybe they're running away from, you know what I'm saying? This type of understanding, but I like the term God as just a term. Obviously his name's not God. I mean, we refer to, I mean, that's a, there's the word God is used referring to all types of things in the Bible that isn't God, you know, and that's a whole nother study in itself, but to use the word God, I think it's for us of a father figure. Um, is more of a personable thing that a God who like we're, we've been talking about having a conversation with the creator and him speaking back to us as we're in prayer and things and hearing the voice of God speak to us. Um, people want to use ter- uh, terms like source energy, the universe line this up. And like I said, I'm cool with those words. I can resonate. I think God is all of those words, honestly, but, um, there's something personable about God. And I guess in hearing the voice of God in conversation format, not just being influenced by nature. I mean, that's part of it, of the, of the way he speaks, but in an intimate way, what, 
why is that important and unpacking that that god cares about you like why would you you name your your book god is talking are you listening can god talk what are some biblical instances that god actually cares you know that you're going through this hardship that you're going through this trial those type of things so i preferenced it that way because i've been having this conversation a lot so do you have it would you unpack that a certain type of way of of god being personable and caring yeah, I mean, if you think about it, if God is our father, then what kind of father doesn't talk to his children? Um, you know, I would argue that if you're not hearing the voice of God, then you don't either A, don't have a relationship at all, or it's a very, very immature, very weak relationship. Just like you would uh, say uh, any child that's never hearing from their parents, you know, on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate that relationship? Not very high. So um, God has always wanted to talk to us. And he, he, I mean, if you think about Adam and Eve, he talked to them all the time. And when we go to heaven, we're going to be there right there with him. And he's going to be talking to us all the time. When Jesus was on earth, he was talking to disciples all the time. He was teaching them. Like, like the idea that God would want to talk to us, I don't know why it's so strange to, to people, um, but in many churches it is. You know, it's like when you start getting uh, people prophesying and say, God told me this, yeah. then they get all weirded out and they think there's something wrong with you. I mean, why is that strange? Can, can I ask you a question? Like, wh- why is it strange that we would think that God – would want to talk to us, you know. Um, to me, I think it's it's just a strange concept. I, I know I know you understand this. I, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to put it in perspective with your listeners and stuff because it, it is a common issue. I mean, there there are a lot of churches that aren't very prophetic, and they're not. Yeah, and that that's funny because I was prefacing that not even about churches. You know what I'm saying? But you're right. I mean, there's a ton of churches who think. You know, they believe in, you know what I'm saying, what's it called? Cessation, cessationalism, which is, uh, or c- cessation, which is that the gifts of the Spirit died and that that was a sealed book and God doesn't, God only speaks through the Word. And, if you and you know, that which is perfect has come, and that which is the Bible, they believe. Um, and if you want to hear God speak, read the Bible, that God doesn't impression put impressions on your heart i mean the whole job of the holy spirit is to teach you it was the holy spirit teaching is it still comforting if so how does that feel is that a relationship so there's a lot of even christian churches who don't even believe in like they, they think that that conversation is heretical you know what i'm saying that god still speaks today you know they think that the book is closed but obviously that's not the case and i think that they think that, you know what I'm saying, miracles are done away with and God doesn't heal, that God doesn't, almost, it almost sounds like he doesn't care, you know what I'm <laughs> saying? They're kind of implementing that, that if you want the answers, just go to the Bible and that's it. But it's not a personable relationship. But I honestly think that the majority of those people who believe that um, come from the place of where the scripture says that these signs shall follow them that believe. And it talks about casting out demons healing people, performing miracles, all of these supernatural feats will accompany the believer. And they haven't seen that in their life. So they're saying, if I'm not walking in this and this isn't op- operating, the best way to explain it is that it doesn't exist. Right. I, I really think that a lot of them come from that. But it's funny, though, because it's not funny. It's actually sad. But I was prefacing it from like a spirituality mindset. But it really comes back to the church as well. Well, I mean, the church is the leader of of what is supposed to be true in this world, or so, at least they're supposed to be. I mean, if the church fails, then, then uh, we're in a sad place. And, uh, and the church has failed in many ways, but there is still a remnant. There's still the church of Jesus Christ that still is alive today. But if you took those people away, if you took us away, those who actually believe that God speaks, Man, this would be literal hell on earth. Because what you see is people going out and, and shooting 
a bunch of kids up in a school. They are people who have never experienced the love of God. And they have been raised by people who have never experienced the love of God. And they've been surrounded by people who have never heard the voice of God. And so if you're not hearing God's voice, then there's, there's other voices talking. And, and they're going to try to get in your head. And it won't be hard to do if you're watching Saul and, and uh, you know, all these horror movies. That you, I mean, uh, you will hear the voice of the enemy if you're allowing certain sounds in your ears and you're letting certain influences come into your soul. You're going to hear that voice. And what's that voice going to tell you? What, what, what's that voice going to lead you to do? Uh, he might lead you to go out and shoot a bunch of people or or maybe not so bad. He might just lead you to, to shack up with somebody and uh, never go to church anywhere and, you know, maybe get high every now and then and then call yourself a Christian. He might lead you to do that. Um, but what I know what he won't lead you to do is to uh, teach people how to hear the voice of God, to teach people about the love of God. And what he won't do is he won't uh, teach you how to heal people and set people free from demons. I mean, the devil's not going to teach you how to do that. And and, and that's why you see churches. Uh, and and you're, you're right that it's not just churches because uh, there's all kind of people in the world. But ultimately, there is one Lord. There is one faith. There's one baptism. Yeah. Of all, you know, Jesus Christ is the way. And, uh, you know, another thing, one of my favorite scriptures, too, is Jesus says, apart from me, you can do nothing. So um, why do why would we think we could accomplish anything, especially in the spirit realm, when, when the, the only true spirit that exists is the Holy Spirit? But why would we think we can somehow accomplish something apart from him? And Jesus said out of his own mouth that apart from him, we can do nothing. Um you know, uh, I know for a lot of people, it's more about experience, because if you've never actually been around somebody who's actually heard the voice of God, then it's just a theory. And it doesn't mean that they don't believe it. It's just it's like there's people if you ask them, do you believe God can heal people? Do you believe God would raise somebody from the dead? They would say, yeah, I believe that. I believe God can do that. Well, have you ever seen it? Uh, no. Do you know anybody? No. Have you ever been in a meeting? No. Um, So in theory, they believe it, but they haven't actually seen it. They haven't experienced it. And when you actually see something, you actually experience it. It will, it just changes you. And and now you're no longer believing it in theory, but now you're believing it based on your own experience. And and your experience is what's going to ultimately change you. And and just reading the Bible alone, uh, you know, I can't just read about, in the Bible that uh, Cornelius got saved and, you know, I can't just read about that. He got a vision. Um, I need to have it for myself. You know, I can't just read about the day of Pentecost. I need to receive the Holy Spirit <laughs> for myself. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. Especially man was like, you know what I'm saying? The new age and stuff too, because they're doing it. They're healing people. They're removing negative entities and unclean spirits off of people. Like, do they get to have all the fun? You know what I'm saying? Like, no, it's not. It's not. You know what I'm saying? So uh, those people who are in those type of churches or congregations, children are having encounters. Children are having experiences with God, with entities in their room in the middle of the night. Like that stuff is still happening, man. That stuff didn't. That's not a fairy tale. You know what I'm saying? Like these churches would like, what do we do? Um, those people don't get to have all the fun. It, it is something very real. And if the church doesn't address it which a lot of them are trying to especially the charismatic ones but if they don't address this kind of stuff then well they don't have the answers they then they'll run to someone who does and the new age community will embrace them with arms wide open you know what i'm saying so we as believers that's why i'm doing the work i'm doing now you know what i'm saying i'm trying to give you a biblical look and and some type of biblical reference to a lot of the spirituality and these and things that even kids are experiencing, whether it's demonic, whether it's godly, whether it's angelic or whatever, and have some type of biblical reference or frame for it. The problem there is that a lot of the churches would just demonize anything that they can't really conceptualize in the Bible or they can't 
say this is it and they can't put a finger on it. Some of this stuff is weird. You know what I'm saying? When we get into the deep realms of the prophetic and understanding angels and spirits and impressions and stuff like that, I really believe when the Bible says that the spirit of the prophet is subject unto the prophets, you go to a pastor and say, hey, I got <laughs> this is going on in my life. They're not, a lot of them ain't going to know what you're talking about. You need to go through someone who has the experience, a prophet who has been there, who knows how hard it is. It's Some of these dreams and visions are not like cookie cutter fun Sunday church stuff. Some of it is of like whatever you've en entertained the movies. God uses that stuff, man, whatever you entertain. We're talking about like hearing those voices and seeing and repeating those visions. It's garbage in garbage out. God can use whatever is in our life, whatever we entertain, that stuff's going to come back up. But the music that we're listening to, it's going to come back up. That's why we're supposed to listen to good, decent, uplifting music that helps us watch, try to watch good movies that uplift us and help us. And thank God that God is moving through Hollywood. And I don't know if those people knew it when they were writing these movies or God just has his way of using all things to bring himself glory because he is in all things. I'm not really sure how that works, but it <laughs> does work. So that's that's the thing about it, about um, just being able to see God in all of it and entertain the good stuff versus the bad. And, uh, you know, we have to, we have to, we have to, we have to step up as, as a church man and, and people who bear the light of Christ and really, um, go places that, you know, we were told not to go or places that other people are scared to go. Um, I found there's a lot of people there that have questions that God loves, man, you know, in, in every circle, there's people in the new age circles, there's people in Islam, God has to send people, I think, into those those realms, man, to reach them with and speak their language or call people out of it and then send them back. Well, however, he does it. He does it. Definitely. Um, but God's heart is for humanity, for every single person. No, and, and that's he loves you regardless of anything, man. So, brother, it's been a good talk. Um, go ahead and let everybody know where they can uh, check out your book where they can purchase your book let them know where they can check out that promo video as well on your youtube <laughs> channel because it, it's a cool little video guys um make sure y'all <laughs> checking out support this brother's work go buy his book share the links with everybody where they can do that um the easiest thing is just go jamesrober.com and that's james r-o-b-o-r.com and uh there's a link to my youtube channel from there uh and of course you can just go to youtube type my name james rober you can find that video there. And uh, same with the book. Uh, you, there's a link that goes to Amazon from my website. Or if you want to just find me straight from Amazon, you can just type my name, James Rober. Um, uh, it's been a, a privilege, man. I'm, I really appreciate meeting with you, Derek. And uh, thank you for having me here. And uh, uh, it'd be nice to you know meet with you sometime. I'm, I'm actually going to be in the States the next month. I'm going to be visiting my hometown in Indianapolis. So I do uh, get back from time to time, and uh, uh, I'm going to also go back and watch some of your old shows. I mean, uh, I just discovered you, you know, a little while back, and, and uh, I thought, man, this this really interesting guy here. He's got some interesting stuff here, and uh, I just appreciate the opportunity to come and share, and I hope that those who've listened, that uh, you're encouraged, that God does speak, and he, uh, he is uh, listening to you as well. That's a whole nother subject. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, thanks, man. God bless you guys. And uh, yeah, brother, yeah. thanks for coming on. We'll have to do it again soon. And uh, a lot of you know the the information did not fall upon death ears. I, I'm just looking in the comment section as we're live. A lot of people are resonating uh, with what you're saying and being open uh, before God. So that's good. And then on the podcast and people listening on the podcast, you already know that his word does not come back void. So if you're teaching biblical truth, it's not falling upon deaf ears, man. Appreciate you for coming on, dude. We'll do it again soon, man. Thank you so much. Thanks. God bless, bro. Let's talk again soon. Bye-bye. All right. Shalom, shalom. Peace. James Rober, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. Good, good interview, man. I mean, it opens up so much, uh, so many doors for, for discussion about, uh, God speaking to us and God using everything. And, you know, that's, that's definitely what I believe we we've seen it happening with, uh, um, 
movies like he's talking about un unpacking uh god using everything if you can't see god in all you can't see god at all uh, it's about listening to his voice honing in on his voice and uh following that voice still small voice you know um Shout out to everybody holding us down in the chat room. Uh, Christy, man, I, Christy's sitting here. Christy, folks, she's sharing her story in the chat, man. It's just some deep stuff, man. Said God called her out of a life of uh, addiction and sin and said that she heard God's voice speak the loudest when she was shooting cocaine in her veins and said that God called her out of that. When she heard God's voice, she never looked back, said that if you don't stop doing this, you're going to die. And so she... Gave her life to God there and left the city and has been changed ever since. Powerful, man. Powerful testimonies, man, that God is, is willing to, to reach down and speak to any of us wherever we are. And, uh, and you know, I have a very similar encounter, encounter to that of God speaking through uh, substance or, or go, going to use substance and warning you. You know what I'm saying? This, not everything is good. You know what I'm saying? So just because there's grace doesn't mean that we can go out and do these type of things. But um, I want to touch on something real quick just to let everybody know kind of an, an announcement for those of you who don't follow me on Facebook and things like that. Because obviously I'm the most active on Facebook and on Discord, too. We've been having some really good conversations on Discord through chat. Um, a lot of us are having conversations throughout the day, uh, text messaging. And there's also voice chat on Discord if you want to contact us throughout the week and just stay in community uh discord is a perfect way to do that so that link is in the description you can download it on your phone and you can download it on the computer as well so when i have free time i jump in there and hang out with everybody but that's the community aspect of it as well um but i wanted to touch on let everybody know that i'm going to be doing a music video here soon and for those of you who want to be in the video you can we're going to be doing a video to our song um, I am, which is on the new album Seer. So if you haven't heard that song, you can go to YouTube and just type in I am Seer, True Seeker, and it'll come up. And if you want to be in the video, we're going to try to put all of our fan submitted videos. So if you want to uh, record yourself singing the song, trying to do as much of the song as you can, whether it's rapping the verses or singing the hook, the hook is very sim simple. You don't even have to actually sing it. You can lip sync it, lip sync, sing it, and uh, send it to us that way but we're going to be putting together a video with all of our fans in that song so that'd be really cool i posted just the idea on facebook and had a lot of people respond had an overwhelming response so we're going to do that i'll put the info on my website so you can go to truthseeker.com check over there i'll put that in info at the top we'll probably give it about a month or so just a couple weeks for people to submit it or maybe just to the end of the month we've got about 17 18 days or so to do that i think that might be enough so if you want to be in the video we'll give you the chance to do that you can use your cell phone all that cool stuff so that is something that we're working on uh let everybody know too that um thank you for the donations and everything because i'm now caught up on the podcast uh we're only like just a few days behind so that's how it should be and uh after tomorrow or the day after after this week we'll be caught up like we'll be in front a day so you won't be listening to this on the podcast and and hearing information that was from three weeks ago <laughs> it's going to be in real time for you if you're listening to these shows as they come out uh huge shout out to everybody listening on the podcast and the numbers are still increasing uh, we got the number one spot on itunes uh, for a couple of weeks straight on, uh, under top podcast and it's still continuing to grow. Um, the numbers are increasing, man. It's very encouraging. And so welcome all the new people who are hanging out. There's something that you guys resonate with here. Um, so it's really cool to, to meet all of you guys. Everybody reaches out, whether it's through Patreon or through uh, Discord or Facebook Messenger chat, all that stuff. It's really cool seeing all these new people. So hanging out james is in the chat now guys make sure y'all uh follow his channel you can right click on his name if you're listening live you can go to his channel and subscribe make sure y'all watch that video so i really enjoyed it too man um it's about personal relationship it's about growing with god growing in god hearing the voice of god speaking and getting deeper and i really want to put the emphasis on it's like whatever you can imagine whatever level that you see in your heart because we see i mean we have dreams and visions of healing people right 
and, and, and it can become a reality, healing people, hearing God speak to us, moving in the spirit, whatever vision that you have for your life, that you can obtain that and walk in that. So with that being said, um, I think we're pretty much caught up on all the, the stuff. There's a lot of cool stuff happening. New interviews just up with um, Philip J. Watt with the Mad Magic podcast. I was on his show and it was really good. Uh, Chris Bars told me. <laughs> he told me it was really good. I went back and listened to it and it was a good thing because I was able to open up more than I usually would on, I guess, this podcast just because I was prodded with some questions and stuff and stuff. Um, prod is not a good word. <laughs> he, he asked really good questions that was able to get me to go into depth about the psyche, about God, about um, the gospel and, and many things. So you hear some stuff on his show that you probably should hear. So make sure y'all go listen to that episode as well. Uh, just type in True Seeker, uh, Philip J. Watt, Mad Magic Podcast. It's on YouTube and uh, it's all over the place. Look it up. It's good stuff. Really good. So with that being said, I'm going to say peace and shalom. I will be back live Thursday. I've uh, been busy. been working on a lot of stuff here and working on some websites for some people, some some uh, pastor friends of mine and some artists and stuff. So I've been busy with that. Also still getting ready to uh, finish up some of these teachings and stuff as well uh, that I'm doing. So if uh, it's going to be out there soon, I'm trying to read through some of these questions. Chris Barr says, just stay live. Uh, thank you for the. Somebody said a while ago, I, I passed the comment, but they said they just started listening to my music and found the podcast and they're grateful. So, yeah, thank you for the support. Thank you for hanging out with me. If anybody has any questions, let me know and I'll try to answer them. If not, I'm going to go ahead and get off of here. I'll go live probably with a q and I'm thinking about doing that on maybe Mondays. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, there's some things that I like to address that um more interactive with the community aspect of it than just um going live on the podcast. So with that, I'm going to say peace and shalom, man. I thank you guys. We'll do it again very soon Thursday even Shalom Shalom Peace Well that does it for this episode folks to hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker podcast head over to truthseeker.com and if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Truth Seeker.